Hey, what's up? Super dope. Happy October 11th, Dragon Ball Day. Hope y'all are playing Spark and Zero and enjoying Dragon Ball Daima. A little bit of a different episode today. I have mentioned several times the last few episodes. Really want to take a look at this new Ranma series. Originally, this was supposed to be done in two parts, but I'm just going to do them together. Uh, I'm going to do them together. So this first uh, segment you're going to hear is me and my Uncle Julius uh, breaking down some of the stuff that we loved about the OG series, some of the stuff we're hoping for from the new series, and taking a look at like some old songs, audio from the old stuff. It's kind of edited down. Uh, I got YouTube flagged like right away on this stuff, so I had to edit some of it down and, you know, mostly keep stuff with commentary. If you're not interested in hearing all that OG backstory, if you've heard me talk about it enough over the course of my life, that's fine. I get it. Uh, you'll want to go to around the hour 15, hour 16 mark, and that's where I'll have some brief comments about the reboot Ranma that came out last week on Netflix. Episode 2 is going to be dropping tomorrow. They seem to be dropping around 1 p.m. Eastern on Saturday afternoons. Very cool uh, afternoon pickup on a Saturday. Not going to lie. Uh, so here's the first part with my uncle and I'll talk to you on the other side about the new stuff and super dope. Uh, so we'll say hello to the patrons. They'll get this audio early or maybe this is a video. I'm not sure how we're going to do this this week, but, uh, what's up patrons. This is my uncle Julius back on the show. Hello patrons. My name is Julius. Great to be here. Kyle. Love you, brother. Love you as well. We're gonna have a good time talking about Ronma today. What the page? Yeah. I mean, the patrons are people who like like us enough to pay five bucks a month to like continue to uh, pay like hosting fees and stuff. Of course. So like they know me better than most listeners do, but they know that like I don't watch enough. I don't watch nearly enough anime, but Ronma is one of those animes that I'm consistently like uh, always talking about and passing as a point of reference to some Dragon Ball shit or whatever other animes. So it'll be fun to have like new Ronma stuff to watch and break down, but I just wanted to do this one as a place setter for the general audience to be like, hey, I uh, watched this thing a lot when I was a child from like ages of four to whenever. Yes, and, you did. Uh, it's, it's obnoxious when I think about it. And we fucking we paid, did. man. We paid a lot of money for those. Dude, I'm not even going to listen. Those movies um, were on VHS. Back in my day, yeah, we had a VHS, <laughs> and we had and we bought them. There was only there weren't any. I mean, later on, I got I got the box sets, but um, there was two movies, and I only got that one movie because it was like thirty something dollars. It was ridiculous. And, and back then, back in those old timey days of the of the of, of the nineties, it was a lot of money to pay thirty dollars for a VHS. Yeah, and then and we if watched you bought... it again and again. If we bought the episodes like for the seasons, it was a two episode VHS. It was twenty five bucks. It. That was it. And you it, it take a what forty five minutes to, to fifty minutes or uh So the point for the patrons is this is not a show that we watched out of convenience and because it was the only thing on. It was something that we actively no. had to seek out and uh we had to hunt. We had to hunt yeah. it, we had to hunt for it. Um Thankfully, um, back I then, we it. had an anime crash, man. I loved to have an anime crash in Providence on Thayer Street when I was a kid mm -hmm. because that was the, it was like the fucking candy store, man. That was the only place that you could get a Ronda yeah. video or Dragon yeah. Ball toy from Japan. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, is that still there? It's not there anymore? It's all gone now? Nah, for long, been gone, long gone. We're probably going on, it probably left early 2000s. Mm -hmm. It was there for a which decade. Is, which is what I'm talking about. All those cool little vintage shops so you can find interesting things about anime and stuff are, are kind of missing because everything is online now yeah yeah it went away pretty much over the course of a few years all it, those it, shops it didn't take stuff. long oh look at an ebay and that's it i can get whatever i needed i mean um, we had a little bit of that even back in the day too though like i got those gt box sets taped off of some yeah. dude's pcr yeah, in japan yeah. for christmas one year i mean that was all ebay dude i remember back in the day though i used to hunt in new york city to go back to to, to, to your um, you know your, your show is just for DBZ videos. Mm. I had I had to find them in Manhattan in the village in Chinatown, and it was like hunting through stores. It was like Indiana <laughs> Jones looking for anime. <laughs> well, like you had to have some semblance of a clue on where to go look. Like it Wait, wasn't like it was every advertised. Place. Yeah, there was no it, advertisements. It was like let's try this store, let's try this store. And we just went in Chinatown, hitting shop after shop. Until we, we found what we found, and then we 
we'd write down the address so we know <laughs> next time we'd go there. <laughs> That's awesome. It was on Walker. I remember the one street was called Walker Street. And that, and that, that was definitely in Chinatown. It was on the corner of Walker and something. And that's where I'd get VHSs all the time of old DBZ. Not of Rama, per se, but of, uh, of DBZ and weird movies, um, anime movies. Um, yeah. They weren't that big on pushing Rama back then. Well, what's weird about it, now that I'm thinking about it, is it's kind of completely reversed, right? So Rama was brought over from, the, you know, from Japan, and it was like localized really well, like we were talking about. The dub cast for the American version, uh, Viz did the dubs. Uh, amazing job. Great cast, great script. Amazing cast. Amazing actors. But mostly, I mean, better than anything I've seen today, mostly. I can't say everything because I haven't seen ever everything. Mm. But, yeah, the, this is a, a top-notch cast that knew their stuff. The only other dub that I can think is Comper, and, like, again, limited anime for me, especially dub. Like, if I watch an anime, I'll usually watch it in Japanese, but... Only other comparable dub that I can think of is the Cowboy Bebop dub. That okay. dub is so goddamn good. Steve Blum kill a uh, Blum. Steve Blum kills Spike Spiegel. He's so goddamn good in that role. Nice. nice. Yes. Uh, but for Ranma, right? Like they localize it all, and they used to advertise it on a lot of other anime tapes and like mm-hmm. little previews for things. And that actually kind of brings me to the first thing that I wanted to watch with you. But I, it was like so, it was expensive. Like that was a barrier to entry for it. But it was kind of, if you looked, if you knew that it was there and you saw it, you'd be like, oh, what is this? Oh, this is that Ranma thing that I saw a preview of. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Dragon Ball Z was like getting a fan subbed because it was the early 90s and they didn't know how to adapt it properly because it was so violent. Right, now, right, right. the world's upside down and it's like a show like Ranma would never catch popularity in America. Hopefully it will today. But be because of the, uh, you know, lots of, lots of boobies. Lots of boobies in that. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be a big talking point, I'm, I'm going to guess, because they were showing a lot of stuff back then, a lot of rest of, of, of kids. Yeah, 16-year-old girls. 16-year-old um, guy. Um, guy girl. Girl guy. Bad guy girl. I, I don't want to know if, I don't know if, if that's considered trans now, back in the day, mm-hmm. right? But now it's, he'd, 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 he'd be a trans girl, um, but not wanting to be a trans girl. He wanted to be a boy, and that was his yeah. thing. Trans girl against his will uh, at the splash yeah, right. of cold water. So I think a lot of people's initial exposure to Ranma. First of all, if you don't know what the hell Ranma is, right? Mar- I'll give yeah. a quick. What's Rama, Kyle? What is Rama? Let's give the quick elevator pitch, right? Ranma Satome and his father Genma Satome are two martial artists who travel from China or travel from Japan to China to go on a training mission to be the very best, like no one ever was. We'll get back to Pokemon eventually, but. <laughs> They uh, eventually get to this cursed training ground and they fall into these cursed springs. Now, whenever they uh, get splashed with cold water, they take the shape of whatever thing drowned in that spe- specific spring that they fell Which into. Which is sad by itself. Because I that mean, means a yeah. girl died in his spring. In that little shallow spring, she couldn't manage a, a way out of it. Uh, so Ranma takes on the shape of a woman. His dad takes on the shape of a panda. And they wear this curse with much shame. And a lot of yes. like their drive as characters is to try to find a way to reverse this curse for them. Mm-hmm. The Meanwhile, father's more okay with it, I feel. The father's oh, kind of dude. cool with it. He uses it as an escape. Whenever he Gen wants to like, just like, eh. yeah, I don't Gen want to deal with this. He's like, I don't mind being a panda. He has special signs made. He brings them <laughs> wherever he goes. He loves it, man. He loves communicating like that. Because then he has the option yes. to just turn it off and do his little panda thing, roll on a ball, yep. stuff his mouth full of bamboo. But Genma, can't, you're right. Genma doesn't really actively seek out uh, much of a solution. You know, he didn't want to help. Only, only um, the girl, the pig, the duck, and yeah. so on and oh, so forth. Only the the teenager. Uh, so meanwhile, they go back to Japan. This this is supposed to be kind of a secret, but Genma and his best friend So Nintendo prearrange their children to be married, so that way Ranma and Akane Nintendo can carry on the anything school of martial arts. And it's more or less like a parody of a lot of different shonen and battle animes and mangas of the time. Since it's designed that way intentionally. It's a very mm-hmm. funny show, as we were talking about. Very funny. And Has a harem, I, harem aspect to it? A hundred percent. Ronmo finds a new fiance like once every five to six episodes. Yep. And in a lot of cases, it's just like, you sold me for a, a fish. Of, of both sexes. That's true. I believe he does have right? a couple of male. I mean, yeah, he, he has. 
the yeah the the blue thunder yeah is uh, it, Atawaki Kuno man he knows all about a, it a great character again the actor killed it uh Ted Cole is the dub actor for that I nice. believe nice Ted guy Cole. nice nice job he's also another character damn actually you know who it is I think I believe Moose the voice actor for Moose in the dub of mm-hmm. Ranma. I believe he's the same guy who does Light Yagami and Death Note stuff. That's another really? great dub. The Death Note that dub. That is a good dub. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it that is. is a really good dub. Uh, but yes, so Ranma it has like a lot of romantic martial arts, hijinks, comedic aspects that happen with it. And the reason we're talking about it is not only if we loved it for, you know, the better part of 20-ish, 35 years, it's, but is it? It's like 30. Oh, Christ, man, I'm old. 90s, right. 90s. Yeah, like 94, 95, we became aware of this property. So, actually, 92. I'll tell you right well, if you want to know the story. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to ask. Oh, no problem. I, um, I, I found drama. You did. (laughs) Guess me. No, I'm sure it it, (laughs) it was out there prior to me finding it. I lived in New York City Um, after high school. um, I went to Boston for a summer and I danced there. And then I went to New York School of the Arts, and I danced for two years there before going into college for dance. And in, in those two years there, I had a little black and white TV in my room, and they didn't have that many channels on the TV, but the channel they did have was a Japanese channel. <laughs> all Japanese, all the time. What? And during a, a certain part of the day, they would show two shows. One of them being Dragon Ball. OG, little kid Goku stuff. Well, it was right when he was fighting Piccolo. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's that's what it's really the transition happens from Dragon Ball to right. Dragon Ball. State. Right when it's about to transition, because I, I remember he's fighting either Tien, because he's about to do it. Yeah, it's, it's Tien, yep. and then into Piccolo, because it was right around there. And the other show was Ranma One Half, where he's fighting, and I remember the episode because he's fighting. Um, uh, the young man who gets lost all the time. Ryoga. <laughs> Ryoga, Ryoga Hibiki. <laughs> Ryoga Hibiki. And he is amazing. Again, Ryoga is a great character. Um, and there's a whole chase scene. And I, that was the scene. I'm like, what are these two great animes? Um, and, and, and that's what it was. And, that, and, and I'll tell you what, it was in 1992. I graduated. I graduated late. And I went there for that September. And... I was there for two years, so it was right there, 92 to 94, like you said. Yeah. But I started watching it in 92, up in, a, so, up in a, an attic an attic apartment in Harlem School of the Arts, 145th St. Nicholas. <laughs> and I was, I was, I, I was happy because I, I watched anime before that, and it was all the, um, the mecha, the giant mechas, the giant robot type stuff. Yeah, like Force 5 stuff, Robotech Force and Force 5 80s. stuff, uh, Battle of the Planets, and Robotech. And Yamato, they called yeah. it um, Starblazers, you know, Star um, which is, you know, they, they, they just redid that one as well a little while ago. Um, yeah, so I'm like, this is up my alley. I love this. I, 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 and, you know, I was dancing a lot and working a lot, so I, I got to watch it a, a few times and knew that I would get back to it and knew that I have to bring it home to your father um, and tell us, hey, look it, check this out. Yeah, and that's what I did with, with DBZ and with Rama. So for my, I mean, my Dragon Ball origin story, I've told it eight billion times, but it's very convoluted. But it's you're there for most of the mm-hmm. good parts of it, wherein I got to get access to all those extra bootlegs and watch stuff early and stuff. For Rama, it started earlier than that, although you know. I, at least I, I think it did. I don't know. You guys are telling me I was watching the Cell games when I was two years old, and I have no memory of that. So <laughs> I uh, I went to my dad's house, uh, Orswell Street, and you had brought over uh, my Super Nintendo was there. I, yes, I had it gotten it from you like the year before. Hard Battle, baby. Yes. <laughs> You had bought Hard Battle, uh, Ronba One Half Hard Battle, and brought it over, and you were like, I don't have a Super Nintendo, so I'm just going to play it when I'm here. And you live like a street over at the time. So we play it all the time. I can jump the fence to your yard. Yep. Literally. So we would, uh, at the, around the same time as you brought that game home, is around the same time that you bought Big Trouble and Necon Ron China. Yeah, the first one. And I remember just being interested in playing the video game because I'm like, it's like Mortal Kombat, but it's different. And it's, it's, you know, it was a different version of Mortal Kombat for me. 
And like, I really got to like the characters and started to wonder about them. So whenever the hell my dad was like, you know, there's a movie that uh, Julius left here over here, right? I'm like, oh, well, okay. I mean, I've been playing the game for three hours. Let's watch that. <laughs> and like, that was the start of something special, man. So right. not we, we had that and we had the first, uh, the first episode, um, first VHS of episode one and two. But Big Trouble in Necron Run China is something that people who like don't really know Ranma even might have a point of reference for. And I, I looked this up today. I thought I misremembered because of the timing of it. In 2000, the first Pokemon movie comes out on VHS. Hmm. And for whatever reason, a bunch of early releases of that film on VHS had this very thing that I'm about to show you on it. And everyone hears it and they go, oh, oh, that's what that is. Yeah, I know what that is. That's sick. Tell me if you could just let me know if you can hear this or not. Sure. <laughs> It seemed like a typical day in the neighborhood around the Tendo training hall, until something different happened. And due to a misunderstanding, I wind up getting kidnapped. Ranma, won't you come and rescue me before I'm married to Kirin? This video brings to you the first Ranma theatrical release, Ranma One Half the Movie, Big Trouble in Nekonlan, China. Available now in stores That's everywhere. that shit right there. See, that's amazing. Kind of gives me goosebumps Chills. a little bit, honestly. Yeah, well, I got it. I got it. Is it from the music, or is it it's got to be like the nostalgia for it too? Listen, it's 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 nostalgia. It's rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> rabbit. It's love is the theme song there. Rabbit. Um, and it's all the feelings that you had when you were a kid. Yeah, that's nostalgia. That and it was a good. It was a good movie. Yeah, um, that first one is solid. Right, it's it's a solid movie, and you know it it wasn't breaking new ground or anything. It's the same type of movie that you've seen over and over again. But you know, you you watched it with family, you watched it with people you love. It was a fun movie, and and it was and, and the animation was really good. I like I like the animation. Um, who's who's the artist, Kyle? Rumiko Takahashi. And you know she. she now, who's that? Tell me more about this person. They did she's, the original, she's the original mangaka. She's the author. She wrote and drew everything. And it's not her first series. She did Maison Koku. She went on to do Inuyasha, which is the, her arguably Didn't she her do Beautiful one. Dreamer? Uh, she's honest. I don't know. She's done a bunch of like really, really short things or one-shot things that like just went to print. Oh, right. I don't know. It may be. Right. Can... And I remember she did, like you said, um, the demon guy. Uh, yeah, Inuyasha. Inuyasha, uh, which was also great. I never really got into it because whenever the hell... I liked it. Uh, well, oh, it is a common misconception that Takahashi hated Beautiful Dreamer and the adaptations from the 80s. But in reality, she just has troubles behind the scenes. Uh, oh, you're a... You, Urusai Yatsura. That's what I do it as. I guess those are the same thing. Okay. Urusai Yatsura and Beautiful Dreamer are the same thing. Okay. Um, and she's still making shit to this day, which I think is fascinating. She's amazing. She's one of the most, pro seriously, she's right up there. I don't want to say alongside an Akira Toriyama, but like if, if he's at the, the forefront of the pyramid, she might mm -hmm. be on that second or third tier. Like she's that prolific. No, she's up there. I think she's, she's, she, she might be A tier. If we're going to go S tier is, a, is, is, is your boy, but he's definitely yeah. a, a, a tier. Um, yeah. Again, in, in doing that great character work and having, you know, each character has their own thing. You know what I think is interesting is that preview we just watched. It's straight yeah. up like I get kidnapped and he's going to make me marry him. Come rescue me. Not one fucking ounce, not one drop, not one hint of, hey, this dude turned into a girl. Hey, this guy turned into a duck. This guy. It's not hit. about that. It's not. But I feel but like it, it's it, there. What Dragon Ball or a lot of anime movies, I shouldn't say Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball expects mm -hmm. you to have some point of reference for things. But a lot of anime movies will go out of their way to catch you up on. This is the general plot. Here's the this hook. is the general, here's the hook. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, here's the shit you need to know to make the story work. He, Rama does not do that in those movies. I guess they have that big running sequence in the first movie, which is cool because you meet eight million different characters, and in that sequence, you see like an old lady throw water out at, at Ryoga or whatever, or mm -hmm. get shampoo with some water. But like. Maybe they do do the same thing. Do do. Maybe they do the same thing, <laughs> but in a way that is less apparent. 
it's it's mm -hmm. a it's a fun well, film because it shouldn't i mean it's there if if that if rama was made now and we'll see if it if if they play a, a big part of it now if it's more about that it's 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 a piece of the show the show is not about like i mean he it, it is, he's um a boy that turns to a girl it's about a boy falling in love with with a girl yeah yeah That's no, what the, show's about. Shit. the martial arts is going on in the background it's the like, body changing right? yep. shit all right. the epic training sequences and learning of mm -hmm. new techniques and all the but drama. In my opinion, the end end of the day, Rama realizing he likes this girl. Um, so it's interesting that you frame it like that, and I'll tell you why. The Rama anime, I don't know where you fell off. I have no problem letting people know. I fell off around the end of season four into season five. In reality, Rama ran as an anime from 89 to 92 pretty much consecutively. And when they localized it in America, I believe it was eight seasons in total. Uh, so eight seasons over the course of however many years they were putting on home release. Around season four, I don't know what the episode count would be. It would probably be in the vicinity of like the 70s, 80s, probably. Right. Things don't go downhill from a production perspective. Actually, the production animation wise, it pretty much holds up. Mm -hmm. But the stories get so repetitive and so it fucking is. annoying and they do the same things over and over and over again so it's like if you drop in on one of those later episodes it's familiar you know the characters you don't even need to know what's going on because you're gonna find you're gonna figure it out pretty quickly because you already saw this episode repeated in four different ways at some point previous in the series right who fell in love with rama and or akani yep uh right? who did genma <laughs> sell ranma out to this time right. uh what's yoga up to out in the woods by himself Getting what are the again. Kuno kids doing in terms of their weird right. obsessions with uh, the people around them ranma and akane like yep. what's shampoo doing in the ramen shop mm -hmm. today ukiyo's got I, and I think, miyaki yeah that's the biggest issue with ranma because they didn't have the arcs so was, have, have you read the manga no i i so, have i have a couple of, i have the first one my friend from japan gave it to me um, it's in my library, but no, no so, nothing where I could get deep. I'm due to reread it because when Viz did the localizations, I was I was going to remember that little um, comic book store in the Swansea Mall in the back corner where the front of Sears used to be. Yep, I think it was Sears. Was it Sears? Apex? Who gives a shit where it was? But it was like half card shop, half comic book store. Mm -hmm, I remember that that dude was importing or getting those localizations from Viz. So I go get Dragon Ball. Cool. Dragon Ball Z were releasing uh, side by side every week. Because mm -hmm. they wanted to, you know, keep going with Dragon Ball Z in the air and needed to bring over OG Dragon Ball. But they started to print single issues of Ronda at the time as well. So I get those and I read through pretty much the end of the series. Now, the manga has those arcs where they, there's like full blown evil villain character arcs in the manga that really are like Pantyhose Taro is a good uh, instance of that. He's in the anime for like two episodes. Like they don't really do much with him. You don't see him. Uh, no, you barely see him. Gazin Kuki, the dude with like the the throws the teddy bear hammers with the hammer and nails. He has like the candlesticks yep. on his ears. Yeah, yeah, He's the like, ghost guy. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. He is in the manga way more, way earlier than he ever is in the anime. They decided to do a lot of filler stuff in the anime for whatever reason and not adapt a ton of the manga. And that too bad. It, it's disappointing for people who like the anime because it's like those stories would have been cool to see animated. On the flip side of that, though as inconclusively as the anime ends where like Ranma and Akane are engaged to be married. You'd think the logical ending of that story would be maybe they got married. Oh, that'd be nice to I, see. I don't even think they aged in eight they years. Don't. I think, I think they get, did a, they did a Simpsons <laughs> and they maintained they like they yeah. haven't aged. They just reset at the end of every week and <laughs> completely right. undo all the things they just learned uh, for the sake of the plot. But with the manga, like it ends to this point where it ends right around the time Ranma's mom finally finds out that he has this curse and she accepts him for who he is, basically Ronco and then whatever. All right. That's nice. And, that's, and that's, that, that's very 2000 now. Yeah. I mean, that's nice, but uh, it's still not the ending people wanted to see. And in, in um, so I feel like, and this is where I wanted to go next, is the expectations for this new series, right? Ooh. So far, based on and this is based off of people who follow the show way more closely than I do. I, I happen to be dialed into a few different fan groups that see this shit and they break it down. 
this first season really seems to be covering like the first two volumes of the manga, which if I had to guess is probably like the first 20 ish issues. Um, okay. So it's going to be much, at least so far, it appears to be much more faithful to the pacing of the manga. Uh, Shampoo is going to come in earlier, I believe. Or no, Shampoo was there pretty early. Mm, my point is those skate, the uh, Azuka and the French dude who do the ice mm-hmm. skating tricks. Right. They right. were kept in like season two of the original localization, but they're like one of the first issues of the comic book within like the first like five or six things. So based off of what they released in some of this promo footage and trailer so far, it looks like it's an attempt to do a more manga accurate adaptation. Awesome. I, I hope. The other thing That's I like a- about this show is the animation style that they've chosen. So far. like, it looks amazing. I think it looks more like her original art than the old show did. Although the old show is one of my favorite looking animes ever. And the color, especially of Ranma female's hair, it used mm-hmm. to be like red, red in the old one. This yep, one's like a little yep. more of like a pastel pink, which is kind of cool because if you look at some of Rumiko's old colored art from that time period, she used a lot of similar colors to that. Uh-huh. So I do think everything I just said there is um, strong evidence that it's going to be at least an attempt at a more accurate manga adaptation. I, I think that's going to help the show a lot. Um, I think the arc is well. It's, it's, it's going to make people want to watch it and, and continue with oh, what's going to happen next time. Because now, although we're in a a bit generation here, where we're wanting bits and and, and uh, well, you know, some people are going to want to watch the entire arc. What's the story from beginning to end in a season, right? And that never happened for me. And even in the first, the first I have, I'm looking at them right now. I have like yeah. five of them right in front of me, and I'm trying to remember. What happened in it? And basically, it was, "Hi, I'm Rama Sawatomi. I'm sorry about this. Sorry about this." And, <laughs> <laughs> which is the best line? Um, it's in the manga. It's in the it's it's in the cartoon. It's in the Japanese version. Um, and that's it. It's like little stories. And little stories are cute. And like you said, you fell off. You fell off for a reason. Yeah. Like I so, have them. I I can't tell you what happened in six seasons. I can't tell no, you what happened in season there's five. There's no way. What's interesting about the first. Uh, yeah, the first two seasons of what we consider, you know, the localization first two seasons is it's technically a separate anime. And then they rebooted it. Uh, Studio Dean is the company that made it back then. They're like, we got to go back to the drawing board on this, update some things, update some animation things, update how we're going to produce this. And then it comes back as Ronmo one half Neto Den, I believe is what it's called. I should have looked that up. Who cares? But it relaunches pretty much the week after the last one ends. So it kind of goes on and it's like a reinvigorated version of it. The first two seasons of Ranma, I think, are my favorite because they do kind of have some arcs in there mm-hmm. with, with these other filler episodes in between. The first five or six episodes of Ranma, it's really about Akane and losing her hair. Yes. As stupid as that is, it like messes it with is, her isn't it? identity as a feminine woman, despite the fact that she's like breaking bricks in the dojo and fighting off all these dudes every day. She feels every like less day. of a woman when she gets her hair cut off in the first Ron Marioga fight. And there are other little arcs in there too. She's like smart. This writer, I mean, she's yeah. doing some smart things. If you think about it, if you sit back and she takes this feminine, it makes her more masculine. She takes this masculine guy, makes him more feminine. She's, she's doing stuff that's way ahead of her, way ahead of time, right? Yeah. I do she's wonder what, I wonder what the modern day reception of this is going to be. Uh, and the, I mean, the, uh, here, here, here are some things I like about Rama. He's not the most powerful character in the world or in the universe. At any given day, he can be knocked out by Ryoga. He's been beaten by other people on his show. He's, 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 he's not going to, he's not going to um, transform into any other version of himself and get more I mean, powerful. The, the female version or the male the version. The female version, yeah. but you know, but not, you know, he's oh. not going to go to the. To, to, to Rama two and a half. <laughs> um, <laughs> and still, you know he's still really good. It's, it's still a great fighting anime that, that shows he's really good. He's really dedicated to, to, to the training. And that's all Rama. He really, that, besides Akane, what he's realizing, all he really cares about is training. Yeah, he's a lot like Goku in that way. Yeah. Um, just always trying to overcome and be ready for the next big fight and be better mm-hmm. versions of himself. The one arc in season two I'm thinking of, it's like a, maybe a three episode arc. He has to go train on Mount Doom because Ryoga learns the breaking point technique and he's going to shatter Ranma's body with a touch of a finger. 
Yes. And like Ranma is uh training in the woods out there and he's like Genma like throws a beehive at him and he's yeah. like Go ahead, he has boy. To get all the bees. Yeah, and he just uses the Kachi Kenshin on a Gurken to like chestnut. knock them all out. The chestnut get, fist. Catch them and shit. It's mm-hmm. so fun. But like to watch that transition of like, wow, you're so outmatched. Wow, you just got bit the fuck up by some bees. And then by the end of it, you're, you know, doing the Rocky sequence, the Rocky montage. You finished all the training, you ran up the hill, you chopped on the tree, and now you're ready to he fight Ryoga. It, it's it's satisfying it's as, as every little as thing is, he does it for because i mean he's a good fighter but he has it's, it's not instantaneous he's not like a savant he has to he, practice he, and train for the chestnut fist yeah i mean he is and he isn't but mm-hmm. he does have to put in a hell of a lot more training and work than goku ever has to do goku oh, sees a move once and he's like that's Memorize it i got it, it. you yeah. got it go oh. next <laughs> is that how it goes okay thanks okay. for that here's that's how to make it now. better Right. You ever thought about doing this uh, instead of out of your hands, uh, shoot it out of your feet? You can do right. that. Okay. But and, and, and he has his own little wave, um, but it's not going to destroy the planet. Nope, not usually. Uh, there is one where he like, I mean, in the movie, he he blows up that, that fucking water? spring. Yeah, I got set up. I gotta blow it up. But yeah. if you hit the water, you're gonna be a full blown man. Can't do it. <laughs> um. So I'm hopeful that it'll be a, a more faithful that the, that the manga. It seems like it's going to be better, more better paced. I don't know. I, I'm excited to see it, and a lot of that comes from other people's speculation based off of the trailer and what they've seen. So with the new Dragon Ball series that's coming out, I think I said this to you the other day. They are doing the little kid Goku stuff, and you know I've been doing this whole thing on the show. Like I got to rewatch some GT, and I got to oh, get no, ready yeah. to. It's a twofold assignment because I've had so many people say to me, Dragon Ball Super is so much worse than Dragon Ball GT. And that's just a fucking lie. No, Anybody... no, it's not. Oh, wait. No, no it's, it's not. not. I'm correct. Yeah. Super is better than GT. Super is better than GT by leaps and yards. I, I, I couldn't watch all of GT and I love Dragon Ball. Yeah. And I hurt, couldn't watch man. all of it. I love it. And I want to go back to it. Trust me. I want to go back because it's on one of my streaming things and it's all on there. I think it's Hulu, and I want to watch it again because it had all this cool, it looked like cool fights at the end, but man, it took a while to get going, and when I guess it took a while. Yeah, I I just uh, did the rewatches, I think the first four volumes, so we'll call it of the rewatch, it's mm-hmm. one, episodes one through 14, and like okay. it starts off in a cool place, it does their first little mini arc, uh, Goku versus Capitalism, I call it, it's, 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 it's a little kiddish, it's fun-ish, it's bearable. By the time I'm at episode 14, I'm just like, how much? I'm like checking how much time is left in an episode. I I can't. You don't want that. No, No. if you're doing that in the middle of a 22 minute episode of anime where at least five minutes is shaved off by the opening song, closing song, and the recap and the preview, like, there's there's not a good sign. There's a problem with with your pacing and your storytelling. Oh my Christ, it's so bad in that show. So I'm doing it because of that. I'm tired of people saying that. And I just want GT fresh in my mind because I haven't rewatched it since probably 2002 2003 and it was hard to watch back then and i still like think about it just it felt like a chore but there are really cool things in between i love trunks here's the thing man i'm sorry i loved trunks Trunks my character i loved him they put him in cool lots they put him in to go back to the simpsons they put him in simpson shorts Yeah, his little fucking tan boy. And uh, Ascot. Tan boy uh, I, I don't know what's going. I had to. I and I pushed. I, I pushed and pushed as much as I could, and I wasn't getting through it. And I couldn't even tell you. I know that there's a, a the dragons come into it, and the dragons are. I couldn't. I don't know. So, yeah, they the baby stuff and and the like the all the the we're, we're out in space looking for the dragon balls that eventually leads to baby. Baby at the end is a pretty cool saga. Super Saiyan Four, uh, mm-hmm. Goku happens, all that cool stuff. They do a couple other fellow arcs in between Super 17. I think that's a really fun arc. A lot of people fucking hate it. I think it's a lot of fun. The evil dragon saga, it's the most interesting concept, but it has the worst execution. It's like you guys have overused or abused the Dragon Ball so much that there's like an evil essence counterbalance that comes out of them. And like each yeah. dra- there's like one dragon per Dragon Ball. And like every time they go find one of those new dragons, it's like, which dragon are you? Oh, I'm the wish from when uh, Oolong wished for panties, the very first wish he ever made. And, it, you know, along with that comes some really stupid 
joke ass dragons where it's like they take a full episode to beat this fucking huge obese blue dragon who's smoking a cigar the whole time and goku like pops out of his stomach or whatever it is and then eventually it gets to omega shenron and we shenron and nova shenron mm-hmm. east shenron who cares what their names are the, the, the cool dragons i had to sit right. through four shit dragons to get the three cool ones and i wasn't into that tell you what though <laughs> the last episode of dragon ball gt is a fucking work of art and the fact that we is didn't it? have it subbed for years Mm-hmm. You've watched the last episode of GT. You might have. I, I remember. I think he visits everyone at the end. I'm flashing back to it. G, old Lady Pan at the tournament with uh-huh. Goku Jr. and Vegeta Jr. fighting as little kids. And right, then she looks right, over right, right. and she sees like whatever version of Bulma this is now, like her great granddaughter. And she mm-hmm. sees a little capsule corp here and she's like, Capsule Corporation. And then she like puts it together somehow. Then when she sees the capsule corp hearing that that's a little Vegeta in the ring. My name looks just like Vegeta. Yeah, we're in the same clothes. It's like Vegeta <laughs> left his clothes out for this kid. <laughs> I let them sit for a hundred years. I don't throw away anything. The end of the end of that though is good. good God, stuff. I don't want to I don't want to get worked up about that now because I'm gonna need to hold that in for when I eventually get to the end of it. But Again. that was all a super long tangent to say, we're watching a lot of Dragon Ball GT, and it, an, another part of it is to get ready for Dragon Ball Daima, because all these people are going to get turned into little kids, and everyone's like, it's GT 2.0, I hate this. Meanwhile, GT's better than Super, kids kid just like the bitch. For the new Super, or the new Dragon Ball series, I did a breakdown of the opening the other day, called, it's called Jaka John. Um which I think is the stupidest name ever, but it's a fun song and I, I kind of dig it. It's stuck in my head a lot. Uh, we're going to look up the name of the new Ranma one half opening song and we're going to, we're going to check it out. It's yeah, called it. um, the new Ranma song uh, makes a splash with opening song video set to Kyokan Kyun by Ano. And I wanted to watch this because uh I mean, it's a good little teaser of what the aesthetic of the show is. Song's kind of a banger. Uh, and I'll talk more about um, why, I, why Ranma music is so important to me uh, after this. Banger of a song. Wow, there is yeah. so much cool imagery in this opening, though. Like, this is so much a love letter to Don't Make Me Wild Like You. You've got the actual running part here with Ranma, yep. who's just running. Like, the Don't Make I feel like we should have watched that one first, but we we're talking about the new series, right? Yeah. There is so much of everyone's just running in place. Dun, dun, dun. There is, there is. I sent you that video, remember? Just yeah. recently, I sent you that cool little um, video from YouTube where everyone's running. They, they, I think they did some kind of production of it on stage, and it looks awesome. It, it, it has no business looking that good on a stage. I mean, it was very well thought out for a stage production, I got to say. But there's other shots in here, too, where I'm just... I mean, first of all, if you look at all the characters that are featured, Ranma, long-haired Akane, I'm sure at some point we've yep. got... You Pichon. see, um, she's in here, too. Short-haired Akane's in here, too, later on. Okay. Uh... But, like, I think this is going to be our cast of characters. The, the yep. Kunos, Kadachi Kuno, Ryoga, Shampoo, Ranma Akane. Dr. Tofu is heavily featured. Azuka. Yeah. There he is, Dr. Tofu. My the favorite fuck. sister is Nabiki. I'm glad she's there. Yeah, Nabiki Tendo is my favorite sister, too. I love, I love Nabiki. <laughs> she's the best one. She's always just scheming shit and up. And the actress who played her again. Amazing. Yeah. I don't know her name offhand, but I wish I did. Oh. I can't remember. Uh, the, oh, the actress, voice, yes, for Nabiki Tanda. Yep, um, there she is, right there. Short oh, yeah, Akane. Yeah, yeah. Short Akane is right there. So we will see her lose her hair in this season, but it looks like we're not going to see Shampoo transform into a cat. I don't think I saw any cat right. stuff. There's our girl yeah. Nabiki. There she is. I love you, Nabiki. Rama, darling. That's, it, 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 what's she, Rama baby, right? Is it yeah. Rama baby? Rama baby. Yeah, this is Rama, darling. Karachi Kuno, Rama, darling. Yes, but I love this whole Tai Chi thing in the middle. There's like a illusion. cool, and you oh, can't really see, but Ryo is there too. Yeah, see, he's a little cropped. So this is a weird video. Um, but there's two other shots in here. This one here of all the things falling out of a bucket. That's like, a is that all of Kuro. them? It, it, all it the actually, cursed? Uh, I don't think they're all cursed. Actually, Does I think Kuno's back? in there too. I yeah. Think yeah, if Kuno's there, then no. Yeah, the you're end, right. 
the end of the season two opening in the OG uh, series, it's like they have some similar imagery to this where everyone's kind of riding a wave, but it's kind of upwards. Uh, so that's an interesting shot they chose to use. And also this shot, I fucking love this shot. It's reminiscent of uh, some of the OVA, OAV openings is what Ron calls them, not OVAs. Stupid differentiation. Um, I can't da, 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 da. I can't remember the name of the song. Sunday Manic Panic, something Sunday Romance, who cares? There is like a lot of bubbles in that opening shot. And at a certain yep. point, like Ronma and Akane are like popping them. Um, and like the sunset in the background is kind of the opposite setting of it. That's like a day thing. This is the night version of that. Uh and I just love Tokyo Dome Genma. Am, He's like the, Am I not seeing Happosai? No, I don't think Happosai is gonna be in this first season. That's what I'm saying. They're going to try to like, there's a ton of characters that we're going to be like, when is so-and-so showing up? And they have, they're, they're really going to try to adapt the manga more faithfully to the point where they give them enough time with these other characters. Like, they're not going to have shampoo come in and be like, here's your two episodes. Now get the fuck out. And we'll see you next season. Like she's, right, I right. think like you were speaking about earlier, it seems like it's going to be a little more well plotted and arced right? out. That'd be great. Cause we, I'd love to see a shampoo moose arc for second season. Well, I think her second season arc, well, I moose can easily play into it too, is her coming back from China and being like, Hey, yep. what's up, Rama? I'm a cat now. Don't you love cats? And he's like, actually, <laughs> now that... you, you like me now? <laughs> no, I actually fucking hate you now. I have, I don't know what cat phobia is, but Ron has got it. Feline phobia. Phonophobia? Uh, this will be this will be our main our main group of people here. Yeah, here we go. Shampoo Ron the skaters, Kane, which is weird guy. because they, they came in late, but like you said, they came in earlier in the manga. Yeah, they they weren't featured until like season two, and even when they do, it's two episodes and they're out pretty much. You don't see the, you see them at another point in season four where she kidnaps uh Peach on again and yep. she's like, Charlotte, Charlotte, my Charlotte. <laughs> So Nintendo, I love him. Kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. I mean, who's crazy? Yeah, really Uka crazy. <laughs> or Kadachi or Shampoo. Ah, you know, of all the ladies that aren't here, and I understand why they're not here. First of all, look at Ronma's lips. What's going on with those lips, man? But yeah, Ukiyo. ooh, it takes me back to um how they used to do black folk in um in, in, in Japan. Eighties Dragon Ball, uh, black people. Yeah, uh, General. Black and Dragon Ball. I believe he's Dragon Black. A very original remember. name, by the way. Yeah, I mean, they were just doing colors, and when they got to him, they were like, mm, what color do we give him? General Black. Oh, but, that's a turban guy, too. The, the, the turban. Um, he used to live there with... Um, talk about uh, Nam? Uh, Namu? Yeah, he's a, he's a black dude. Oh, uh, Oob. You're thinking about Oob. Yeah, Oob. Yeah, I think he, he's definitely black complexion, but he is Indian, I think. Oh, so but, you don't get the lips. See, that's honestly a thing that is commonly discussed in our fandom, and I think it's so fucking annoying. It's like, he has the appearance of a dark-skinned man, right? Oh, but he's from India or whatever fictional fucking country in the Dragon Ball world? Why are we fighting about this? Who cares? Ugh. Fucking race supremacists in a goddamn Dragon Ball. Bro, you watch uh, Dragon Ubu. Ball. Remember, Ubu came out as brown too, right? The Wish? What do you mean he came out as brown? He's brown. Ubu, isn't Ubu brown? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oob. Oh. Ubu. The fighter. For, yeah. And then he's Majub when he reabsorbs with Majin Buu. But you haven't yes, watched yes, Dragon yes. Ball GT. Although that is one of the good parts of GT. When they finally are like, hey, remember that guy Goku trained up over the last 10 years that we saw in the first episode and never saw again? It'd be pretty cool if he showed up to save the day right now, no? Nobody right? saw what yeah, he could do. As powerful as, like, that, that was the wish. Yeah. Majin Buu reincarnated into a good guy. It's wild. But no, they wasted it. And Dragon Ball Super is never going to properly give it to me unless they just tease it in a manga where he raises up his hand for a fucking spirit bump. Too much Dragon Ball talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for Rama. Um, I'm excited was, for Rama too. I'm excited for all these characters. I'm excited for Ryoga. Um, not enough love has gone out to Ryoga. He has a tragic the, story. The they all have these wonderful boy. stories. I wish that they're taking time with and not just one episode stories. Um, yeah, I mean, I bet you that's going to be a talking point for people too. They're going to have their moments because I think a lot of people don't do both. They don't both read the manga and they b watch the anime. It's usually one or the other. And I bet you more people watch the anime than read the manga. 
Right. And they're going to be like, where's that favorite episode I like with Sasuke, the fucking Kuno butler? Like, who gives a shit, dog? <laughs> Sasuke? Yeah, you know. It's a good one. But yeah, I, he's, you know, he's really cool. <laughs> he's cool. He's the coolest. But Ryoga, but Ryoga, you know, first of all, everyone hates, either they hate him too much or they love him too much. I mean, yeah. I don't want to say he was the original Vegeta because I can't really say that from a timing perspective. But Ooh, that's a good question, though. Actually, came he, first? he may have been. Oh, man, I'm going to have to look and it I up. I was going to ask you this about Hapai, about, um, about, yeah. about Roshi and um, Hapusai, too. Who came Roshi first? definitely existed first. Who was the original Leech? 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 Lecture. Lech- Lecture. There it is. Uh, I'm going to look it up. Ryoga Habiki premiere date uh let's see so Tomei's eternal rival this would be interesting to know once and for all uh contents blog why don't you just give me a date guys 19 you know they're just gonna say he's a copy of bakugo they're all the same archetype are you watching my hero this season i am watching my hero this season are you all caught up did you see this past week uh, i believe i did oh my i believe God. i did it's taken no. a long time to get shit done yeah, it's like no spoilers they're, they're really, for people, but no, I'm not yeah. saying nothing. I'm just saying it's, it's taking a long time to to do things to get where we are. Well, there's just so much to cover. You know what I mean? Right. And they, they could have done it la- last year, though. They could have. Done they could have. I mean, I think they got one more season left of that before it's going to be yeah. over. But in all reality, it's too close to call. You know what? I'm going. I'm saying it now. Ryoga is the original Vegeta. I don't know that for a fact, but I bet that it is. Yes, he, I think Although he is. Too. It's close to call. It's close to call. Very, and yeah. Ryoga was the Vegeta archetype because Vegeta was just supposed to be a, a villain. And then he kind of caught on and they kept him going into the next arc. And then he right. somehow was, you know, like mm-hmm. he continued to come back due to the character's popularity, not because it was necessarily planned that way. And then he kind of fell into that Ranma Ryoga role with Goku. I don't know. I'm calling it. I think Ryoga Hibiki is the original Vegeta. Somebody proved me wrong. Yeah, I I'll think probably prove right. myself I, wrong I think, later. Um, I, I think we all go. I mean, again, he does it so well. Like he hates, he hates him. But sometimes they get. I mean, so does Goku and Vegeta. They get exactly. along so well sometimes, and then they get along well. And when they have to fight together, they fight together. Um, they, you know, they, they, they team up sometimes. But you know, dude, Romagus uses them. Even what we saw, he uses them as like a jumping board. Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the big trouble in Nikon Run China movie. Yeah, he's goes he's right like, over him. Dude, Ryoga like does a full sprint and tries to jump up for Akane, and then Ron nope. just jumps on his head and uses him as a springboard. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny stuff. The disrespect. The well, subtle. Uh, uh, yeah. Subtle <laughs> disrespect. Because like you didn't even think about that in the moment, but then when you stop mm-hmm. and think how he just jumped so high, it's like. Yo, he just used that guy's neck as a spring. He certainly That's pretty did. Cool. That's Ryoga's pretty cool. so tough. He's so powerful too. Um, you have to respect Ryoga. Um, and again, on any given day, one punch from Ryoga could knock out could knock out Rama. Um, so there, there's always, there's always that respect. And even um, the Blue Thunder of <laughs> yeah, Tatewaki Kuno. Tatewaki Kuno can hurt Rama. Like Rama can be hurt. By most, including Akane, like anyone, like you know, yeah, she hits him with and dumbbells I, and coffee tables on a regular basis. Yep, 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 on a regular basis, and and until they get serious, and then they get serious, and it kind of then kind of shifts a little, little bit. I feel Akane is awesome, I, and I hope they put her less in the um, save me, Ranma, from getting married. Yeah, to like, you know. Because, yeah, and, and even then, I was like, Rama can, I mean, Akane can probably take this guy with the, with the chopsticks. The OVA that I love the most is when the two orphan girls show up to try to take over the Tendo Hall and be like, So, and we're your illegitimate, uh, illegitimate children, and we're here to challenge those two girls for the, the fight or the, the, the right to carry on the school. And then they have to fight as a team. Like they don't fight as a team enough. The ice skating episode, that's a good example of when they have to operate as a team. And there's just right. not enough of them. It's usually, you know, damsel in distress, uh, archetype for her. It stinks, but she is, uh, she can punch she's a lot a of holes. She's a powerhouse. She's, she's thick as a brick and twice as dumb or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. I, I, I under, I bet you that I'm going to have some frustration, maybe frustration, not the right word. Maybe I'll enjoy it so much, the pacing of it, that I won't be thinking like, when is Hoppo, although Hoppo size is a bad example. When is Ukyo going to get here? When is Moose going to get here? When is Cologne mm-hmm. going to get here? Like she's, Cologne is one of the most underrated characters in that show for me. She can be annoying sometimes with her son-in-law shit, but she is, uh, but she's, she's a cool one character. the show elevates to another level in a lot of ways in terms mm-hmm. of the martial arts stuff they do. I'm excited. But she trains him too. Like she, she takes over from where Happosai leaves off. Yeah, she helps him get ready to fight Happosai at a certain point when the, the Phoenix Pill arc. That's another one of those little mini arcs in season two where like Ranma has the sensitivity of a cat's tongue, his whole body, unless yeah. he can get the Phoenix pill. So that makes him, that means that he's stuck in his girl body. Cause he can't be hit with hot, hot water. water. Him. Yeah. He'll basically die too much. Um, there's a lot of cool little mini stories in those first two seasons. And for whatever reason, they just change it up to be more of a story of the week formulaic sitcom kind of shit. I mean, that's the way that you could describe it. It's like a martial arts anime sitcom. It is rom com, rom rom com, sitcom, martial art com. Um, it's all there. And even if, if if you ever watched the last episode of Ranma, have you? I mean, I'm sure you did. I, I know. I, I've done it just to see how it ends. So I, when you say the last episode, it's the last episode of the last season. Like the, it's I think it's episode like 144 or something like that of the original television. Or are you talking yes. about like one of the last OVAs? Because they put out OVAs after the fact a few years later. Oh, did they? They've done but a few it, of them, but none of them have like a conclusive finishing thank, ending to it. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, oh, though, yeah. this is the end. Nothing happens. Nope. He doesn't find the cure. If that if that was the show was all about, he doesn't end up with a Kane. If that's what the show is all about, he doesn't it's want just, a big fight or save anything from something. Nope. It's just the end of the day, and they wake up and do it all again the next day. But you're not there for it. Presumably, exactly. I don't know. Slice of life and, every day. Yeah, and. It's kind of frustrating because it's it's not what the anime it's not what the manga anyway was meant to be consistently. Like I'm sure they have those filler ish issues or whatever where it's just kind of a slice of life fun little thing, but there used to be arcs in there and for whatever reason the anime chose to do it a completely different way over the course of the three years it was on the air. Three years. Well, it's not a long time, but they did an episode every week, so hundred and forty four episodes in total, I think, woo. is the number. That's a lot. That's a lot. It's a ton. Yeah, no, eight no rest, man. Like episode every single, and again, like if you have to do that kind of deadline, why not just borrow from the pre-established source material? Why are you writing your own? Like, may maybe it is easier for them to just be like, we have these uh, assets we can reuse. Uh, what's uh, let's do another stupid ice skating story? Oh, Peach on <laughs> is kidnapped again. Or a cooking story? Wasn't there a cooking one too? A ton, man. There's like t- season two has an episode where it's like. Anything goes school of takeout delivery and like they have to run down a mountain and not spill ramen while everyone's trying to fight each other at the same time. Yes. And it's, <laughs> and it's not. Those are all the episodes. Pretty That's much every episode, right? That's Rama, pretty much it. Rama has to fight a guy. Akane gets kidnapped. They have some kind of martial arts food thing. Sometimes then, they, dance. they do gymnastics sometimes for some reason. Oh, oh yeah. There's uh, the ribbons and the, the pins. Hopposai goes on a panty raid. The two things that are not going to go well, and I know this because it, we live in the time we live in, but also people are already sort of um, vocal about it. People are not excited to see a character like Hopposai return with how problematic he's not gonna he is. Come, no, there, there's no way. And I want to talk to you about this, too. Like, there's no way he's going to come into this show during this time now and be doing the same things he was doing. Like, he's groping a 16-year-old. He would. I mean, he's literally like two and a half feet tall. He would just clamp onto the front of her and boobs and her. stick his face in there and be like, what a haul, what a haul. And then he'd like do some karate out the window and go continue to steal all the women's underwear in the whole fucking town. There's no way they're going to bring him back. There's no way. Unless I mean, they tone him down. They're going to have to tone him down considerably because he's too important of a character to be able to just discard like that because he yeah, is he like Ronda's ultimate master. Teacher. Right. And villain in a lot of ways. The other thing that people are sort of... Uh, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to handle it. I guess we'll see. But some of these early stuff, like there is a shot of Ron falling in the Cursed Spring and opening up his gi. And it's this pretty much the same exact shot of the yeah. original anime. 
and you see the top of the breast and then you see a little bit of the nipple. Yep. In in this modern day one, you still see the top of the breast. They still show the shot pretty much the same. You don't see no a nipple. nipple. And I'll I'm tell you, man, that. people are pissed about the no nipple. Are you pissed about this? Are you, are you am, on board? I'm not pissed. I'm annoyed. This is what the writer did. We did not freak out. You didn't turn to some type of crazy person because you saw a nipple at whatever age it was. Yeah, it didn't make you insane. I haven't really considered that the reason why I am the way I am, but maybe it is, man. I should test out that theory and look at more nipples. I don't think it did. I think it turned out all right, despite seeing um, a nipple in a, a TV show that's about being okay with change. This show is about it's okay and and we talked about it earlier how it, it's okay and throughout the entire show the 144 episodes if if you watch them all it becomes so oh that's just drama he turns from a guy to a girl it's not a big deal every single time it becomes okay like at first it's like oh my god it's, it's a shock and then and, and then it becomes it's Tuesday Rama got hit with a hose and Again. no one cares that Again. dude is getting hit with the hose six times a day for some Non-stop, reason nonstop and people. You know they accept it. It's it's, it's just Rama being Rama, and 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 it's okay. It's 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 about changing, knowing that we are different people. It's fine. Um, and if if you're, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm I'm annoyed because I hate too much um people controlling what I'm watching. I don't want that. Um, and and did I oh you know did I tell Greg all oh, that this might happen? You know just to let you know, blah 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 blah. Yeah. And Greg, whatever. Just you know. It's, it's, I remember. It's, it's cool. I don't remember like the first time I saw it, but I do remember watching it young and being like, I'm "Not sure if I'm supposed to see this, but I want to see what happens because I like these characters." You know, like, well, oh no, Portuguese, oh no, she Catholic followed him. Came in. Yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of that to this day. My grandparents did a number on me, but I see her walk into the bathroom after him, and I'm like, "She doesn't know. She's about to learn." Oh no, this is uncomfortable. Oh my god, a boob! It's a lot to like process all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and oh, and that's like one of the the first episodes. They walk in on each other, right? Yeah, second half of the it first was, episode, right? It's like, oh, oh, hi. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm Ron Masatome. Sorry, you, the that. camera can't see it, but this is my dong. <laughs> like and, he takes a step up onto the bath as she walks in through the door. The camera is like his thigh is covering where his junk would be, and she just has a full on. And then she sees stop. it, steps out, closes the door, and just screams. Great comedy. Great comedy piece, right? What, and then what she do? What happens? She sprints downstairs screaming, and everyone's like, "What the fuck happened?" She's like, "There's a perv in our bathroom. I'm gonna murder him in the bathtub." And she takes the fucking coffee table up there and right. smacks the shit out of him. Yes, peak comedy. And you know what? Really For anybody who hasn't seen them, they're on Hulu, I think. But I'm pretty sure the majority of at least some of the early episodes are in Japanese on YouTube for free as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's worth checking out if you have no point of reference for the stuff that we're talking about. Even just the first few episodes to get a general setup for the premise of what this new show is going to be. Um, it does a pretty good job in the first two episodes, kind of setting most of those expectations of the dynamics in the relationships or whatever. But I think... Um, I'm just excited to see how it goes. I'm like, I hope that it's more. My, one of my fears about this show is that they'll give it a season. It'll be a really fun. I don't think it'll be an anniversary season. Now this is Dragon Ball's 40th anniversary this year, right? Mm -hmm. So Ranma's 86. So yeah, 38 years. I don't think that's a special anniversary. 89 though. That's 35 years from the original anime. So maybe it is a kind of, I hope it's, my point is, I hope it's not a celebratory thing for one season. I hope it gets yeah. to go multiple seasons and fully it's, flesh I out these it, arcs. Because that, that would be great. This is one of the funniest animes um, that came out back in the 90s. Some great characters. Um, it made me laugh um, because it wasn't like hardcore like DBZ. I came back for DBZ because I wanted to see the fight. This is amazing. I want to see this fight, fight, fight. It came back to Rama because I wanted to laugh. Yeah, and, and and I love the characters. Right? Honestly, I talk about it with Dragon Ball Z all the time. The fighting gets repetitive for me after having watched it since I was a small child. Right? I think right. It, I think a lot of us feel that way, unless it's a you know peak fucking Dragon Ball Z fight. There's like a handful of fights that I could watch over and over again because the choreography is so good. But a lot of it mm -hmm. is like repetitive shit you've seen a billion times. Right. I love Dragon Ball for the interactions between the characters and that shared history and watching the characters interact in different kind of dynamics. That is what continues mm -hmm. to bring me back to Dragon Ball. But now that I think about it, Ranma was very much a thing like that for me as well. Um, yes. But I, I kind of, 
I don't know. Maybe I do like the choreography and the fights in Ranma a lot too, because they're it's not different. Dragon Ball Z. It's not it's like different. so over the top blur shit all the time. Like no, no, no. It's like these cool stop motions, and they're, they're showing you how fast he is without showing you how fast he is. It's really these little moments that they freeze in time sometimes. Hmm. Like when Rama kicks um, Tatuwate Kuno. Yes, with the first fight that they have. Yeah, the first fight is, is, is and he's like, what? And you kick like eight times, and you see all the foot marks on him because he kick, 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 kick. Yes, yes. I haven't thought about that in a long time. I know exactly what you're talking about. And you don't and even like, realize it because it just moves so fast. Right, right, right. There's a lot of smooth stuff going on, and it's it's a fight in anime that's really funny, and it has some, and it has something to say that when you're younger, you, you're not seeing it. You're just seeing a, a, a um a funny show about fighting, and you know when when you peel back that onion, man. You realize it's about accepting people for who they are and the, the idea of masculinity and femininity and how intertwined they are and how important or how unimportant they may be as, 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 as well, right? Yeah, I mean, it, Ranma is a character who... That's the other thing I like. All these characters very much have flaws. Ranma's never shied away from using his female side to his advantage. He will like, take at, advantage. Yeah, at first it is very much food? a shame thing for him, but then once mm-hmm. he realizes all the things he can pull off as a girl, he's like, this is great. He even he even prefers to fight as a girl sometimes just for the yeah. physical advantage it does or doesn't give him. Like, mm-hmm. it is, is Ranma about to come, or is Ranma already a trans icon, or is are they about to become one? They are. I, I, I think they should be, because he, because they, if you want to do it, then they were ahead mm-hmm. of, if they're identified as that. They were ahead of their time. Um, he always says he wanted to be a boy, though. So I'm going to refer to him yeah. as he, because he is always trying to get back. You right. He accepted it. Yeah, this is my circumstance, and I'm making the best right? of okay. what Well, got. this is who I am. I'm this, I'm this person. I'm a boy. I changed this in, 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 into a girl, and I'm going to accept it. Imagine if that was what we learned today. You know, there's a bunch of people out there who are morons, who, who are not getting it now. And they, they, they were already talking about it in the 90s, dude. They were already talking about it in the 90s. They were saying, pay attention. This is, you know, this is what, it's, 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 it's not important. It's Truly important sure. in one way, but it's not important where we should be hating this person. It's a, it was a show ahead of its time in regards to that messaging. I might cut this next part. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But I don't think I've ever told you this. And I think it's, I think it's fascinating. Um, when I was a kid, Dragon Ball was my anime. Once I got into Dragon Ball, it was the only thing I could think about you know, from third grade on. It was like my favorite thing in the fucking world. My, but I also love Ranma too. You, do you probably not? I had a best friend named Jeff back when I was a kid. He and I hung out all the time. Uh, we watched a ton of anime together. Played a lot of N64. His mom was like my second mom. She was phenomenal to me. Um, Jeff always picked Ranma, loved Ranma, loved the characters, loved the fights more, wanted to, we, we do the thing where we call each other, you know, fucking anime character names. He's Ron, mom, Goku, uh, other friends have other names, stupid shit like that. Jeff is now a woman named Aubrey. And I often wonder if Jeff would have made that transition to a woman named Aubrey, if they'd never were exposed to Ranma. Jeff had a lot of issues growing up. Jeff still, uh, I'm this, I'm dead naming. They had a lot of issues growing up. Eventually, a lot of those issues turned into substance issues, right. and then the substance issues. They kind of got a handle on it, and in the midst of it, they made the transition. And I think they kind of go back and forth. I'm not really a hundred, but um, the fluid. No, no, no. I mean, go back and forth in terms of substance use. Did, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I forget. Well, she, which... First of all, she. I don't know what her name is now. Aubrey. But... Aubrey, I think Aubrey knew. Aubrey knew. I think sometimes you know when you're young, and she loved this idea, and I don't think it changed her. It was already there. And Rama was like, it's okay. Rama made it okay a little bit, I think, to, for yeah. Aubrey to, to, to do this thing. It, it didn't change her. It was already there. If I'm gay... If I'm if if I if I'm a gay man, I'm not gonna watch Will and Grace. Will and Grace is never gonna make me gay, I promise you. I I just love men. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, you heard it here, folks. It's, you heard it here. It's, it's not it's not Will and Grace that made me gay, it's that my love for men makes me gay. Yeah, it's and just like this, my and, genetic and, predisposition. Right. It's my genetic and, and the same thing goes for 
for the and it's different obviously if i'm a woman and if, if, if i know i'm a woman and i tried all these things and i feel it and i know it's right okay then i'm i'm a woman and it's hard to come out and that's it's it's it maybe it's even harder to come out than it is to be gay sometimes i feel and but they're this show and this person is dealing with it and at, for, and at first like you like Robert doesn't want this he hates it he hates it he wants to be a man wants to be a man but again he accepts it and eventually Rama, makes it work for themselves and yeah, uh he makes it work for themselves and he does it and it's okay and here are the pauses of, of me being a woman it's okay everyone on the show also is accepting of it why, why wouldn't aubrey l love this show and be like yeah this is going to be i'm I, I, i'm sure she has the entire freaking dvd collection at her house oh. Almost definitely. Yeah, almost definitely. Like right? they were the one that started uh, ordering the manga off the internet, like before mm -hmm. the big Tonkabon volumes were available on store shelves everywhere, yep. like they are now. Their yeah. parents would uh, help us order that shit online. Yeah. And, 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 and she knew that, okay, this is, wow, it was an eye opening thing. For, uh, and how lucky for her to live in, to, to see that. I think it helped her, if anything. Because how many trans people don't have that, um, you know, uh, that little bit of like, wow, this is kind of, this kind of relates to me. Kind of a role model in that respect. Yeah, like a role it, it, model it, it, or, yeah. yeah it's a kind of a role, because you, at first you're going to hate yourself. And it happens for a lot of people who, are, at first you hate yourself. Why am I different? Sometimes black people hate themselves. And why am I black? This fucking sucks. And everything sucks. And gay people can hate themselves. Loathing, right? And mm -hmm. at first, that's Rama. Rama hates himself at first. He's like, oh, not hates. He hates being a girl, though. He hates it more than anything. Um, I don't want to be a girl. And he, 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 he it's funny because they always go back to this friggin' place and he, they never jump into that boy pond, though. <laughs> yeah, they have several opportunities and they're just like, oh, yeah, man, we forgot. But, you know, and I'm, now I'm just repeating myself, but, you know, they learn to accept it. Everyone on the show learns to accept it. He walks to the house as a girl. No one says a word. Except for the father, who's being a jerk sometimes. Yeah. Why don't you walk around as a boy, boy? You're right, killing right, your right. father but with shame. Else, the, um, the, the, everyone who finds out is pretty cool about it. And then you said at the end, the mother's like down with it, too. Yeah, she's accepting of, of Ronco. Think about that. And, she, and, and, and then if, if Aubrey, if, if she bought that and, and read all those books and said, oh, my God, this is okay. Why wouldn't it make it easier to go to come out? That that would be a, 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 amazing for her to do that. Um, the drug piece, the drug piece can be the drug piece. If you want to have a whole other section, we can go to my therapy hat as as to why people do drugs. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I don't think people know the credentials that you have and what you do for a living either. So, if you what right. what's your official title? I'm a licensed independent clinical social worker. Got it. L I C S W. L I C S W. I can. I'm a therapist, and I can give. I, I can diagnose people. That, and I'm not diagnosing anyone right now. Yeah. But I am a, a licensed therapist. If, if push comes to shove, I'm a licensed therapist. Matter of fact, I need to get my trainings done before my birthday, otherwise I lose my license. But Coming that up, being dude. said, now until December, I'm a licensed, <laughs> um, a licensed therapist. And that being said, if the parents, people use drugs for a bunch of reasons, and it could be because of the stress of 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 transitioning and how her family dealt with it how she was dealing with it how her friends were dealing with it or it could be anything else because if her parents were addicts she could have been an addict you have a higher genetic like you said genetic if, if your parents are addicts you have a higher genetic disposition to become an addict yourself and you'll True. see it you know there's parents there's families of alcoholics and there's families of alcoholics for a reason and that is that yeah, um, and then they breed and, and make super alcoholics like me. They make they, they're the most powerful alcoholic of all time. <laughs> oh, I know no but, power. I mean, so there are tons of reasons for substance abuse, and and the stress of transitioning is not going to help. That's no, certainly not. No, that's that's one right. of the, the biggest life being, decisions. Yeah, yeah, that that, that it, it's not going to help you um, not do drugs. <laughs> 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 yeah hey i'm trying to get sober oh you're right so i'm gonna transition to the opposite sex now oh all right so do oh. you want to just buy some more drugs now because that's not like give time. you this needle in here enjoy yeah have a, couple, have a couple of pills on me then 
uh, uh, I don't know. So I, I just mean, think there's tons of reasons for that. It, it 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 is interesting, and but I I'm 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 happy she's out. I'm happy she's living her real her. Um, yeah, for her the real self over a decade now, probably. Yeah, awesome. I haven't That's amazing. I haven't stayed uh, up to date with them super well, but I talk with their mom every now and again just to catch up and say hi. But mm-hmm. uh, it sounds like they you know, from last I knew they're doing That's doing right. good and staying sober. That's the hot part, right? Yeah. If you have the, the, the worst of it, like trans, trans, transition, it may be a lot easier than, than kicking substances. Yeah, especially a thing like heroin, dude. Like, oh, heroin. Ugh. Yeah, like the stickiest of the icky and not in the yeah, positive it, way. It's, it's, but ugh. now that we just... Not impossible. Um, n- not impossible. I've seen it happen. Mm-hmm. Now that we have kind of set expectations on what we hope for for the new stuff, we talked about that just now, and I don't want to end substance use disorder that's a sensitive topic for yeah. people right <laughs> let's end on a more uplifting positive note sure. and i think you know exactly where i'm going with this Tell me. and if you don't you will in a moment even for the time this animation is still really fun it's still it's fun up. Here it is. The running. I love the panda run with his arms mm-hmm. out. It's like the original Naruto run. <laughs> hey, doo, doo, doo. Did, did you memorize this one as well in Japanese? I know like all of these fucking songs. I don't know all the words anymore, but I used to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, I used to. <laughs> a lot of butts. A lot of butts. A lot of flat butts. Yeah, it was not cool to have a big butt in the 90s. No, no, no. no. And the long hair is played, right? The long hair is big, this whole opening. Yeah, it really is. She doesn't lose it until I think around like episode 8 or 10, somewhere in there. I know it's on the fifth tape, but that's probably out of around the ninth or eighth or ninth episode. Mm-hmm. And I like that they're showing this because you don't know what's going to happen. If you're living back in time, you have no idea this is, it's going to happen. It's true. Right. I am uh, so fucking excited for this show to come back. I I took the day off of work for the Dragon Ball thing because I don't right. know exactly how the timing is going to work out. This, I think, is going to be on Netflix. I think the day after it broadcasts in Japan. So globally, it'll be right. on Netflix the day after. So I think it comes out in Japan on the 5th, which is Saturday. Comes out, I think, likely Saturday night, which means it'll be Sunday morning here. If it's the next day, there's a possibility we could get it on Saturday afternoon. I think it's more likely Ooh. we get it on Sunday. Either way, keep an eye on it for Netflix. Or, I don't know, I haven't watched animes week to week in a long time. Mm-hmm. With Dragon Ball Super, we would have a rip of the Tokyo or the Fuji TV broadcast. Usually within like 20 minutes of it being out in Japan, we'd have it mm-hmm. on like all the social media feeds to watch. I, I hope that's not going to be a factor here for them only because i want this series to make some money for them so they continue to make it me too uh but it's gonna we'll be weekly it's not gonna, not, not gonna dump all the, the whole season no it's gonna be weekly it's gonna okay. be weekly and i would guess it's probably gonna be 22 season uh 22 episodes wow so like full length anime uh season um as opposed i mean back back for those three years it was on tv before it was every single week i prefer i wish dragon Ball would move to a fucking seasonal format dude I wish for that so badly when it was still on the air. And Daimon is kind of a, a test run of that a little bit and that it's a limited series. But um, October is going to be really fun for me on this stupid podcast feed for the first time in a long time. Ranma, Dragon Ball Daimon, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, My Hero Academia is going to be wrapping up. The movie for that is going to be coming out, I believe, in mid-October. There's going to be a ton of shit to talk about this month. And I'm going to do my best to keep up on all of it, hopefully. Uh, Uncle Julius. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, man. Jump it on kind of uh, last minute with me. me on. I love talking to you. I love talking anime. I love to do it more. Great. Thank you very much for having me. You're going to have to come back on once the show starts. Like once we get a few episodes of it, you'll have to come yeah. back on for a, a little check-in one just to be like, take what do we think? Dude, yes. I take, I have a lot of legal yellow pads around here. I love taking notes about anime. It's kind of, it's kind of weird, honestly. That's what you do. Is it, is it, eh, it's, a it's a hobby. It's a hobby. It's a hobby. So 
I hope uh, that went out pretty much unedited. We talked about a whole lot of stuff, including my friend Aubrey at the end there. So um, kind of a different episode. I didn't really expect that to come up, even though it's something I do genuinely think about a lot. Uh, it was good to talk with him, who's like a like a therapist, you know, see how that uh, kind of played with him and, and what he thought of it. Either way, this Ron Marie boot, I'm going to keep these thoughts sort of brief, and I'll tell you why. Daimon's dropping in about 25 minutes. After that, I'm going to GameStop and picking up a PS5, coming home, and downloading Sparking Zero. There's been too much stuff on the internet about it. I, I have to play it for myself. I'm tired of living through you fucks. I got to do it myself. Um, now... This Ronma series has been the reboot for Netflix. If you haven't checked it out, and you know, if you haven't watched, even if you haven't watched the new one, uh, the first episode does a wonderful job setting everything up, just like the OG series does. It's been kind of polarizing, I feel, uh, in the community. Some people are all about it and think it is uh, done with a great level of love and care. And uh, I'm in that boat. I loved it. I had so much fun with it. There's a lot of other people who are just pissed that it's not a continuation of the old series or done in the style of the old series or isn't like a shot for shot remake, doesn't have nipples. That's a thing that people are very upset about. It's proven to be polarizing and I'm kind of surprised. I thought a lot more people would like it. It really has been 50-50. I'm, I'm not really as active in the Ranma community as I am in the Dragon Ball community. So, you know, that said, I, I don't think I'm tied into the pulse of the fandom as much and i don't know nearly as much about ranma as i do dragon ball never will but something i genuinely love so that's why we're talking about it i thought more people would like it um there are so i like the animation style of it there is like a certain sort of um warmth i'll say lost now that it's not hand-drawn animation cells like it was back in the 90s and it's all digital I do certainly prefer the aesthetic and what the old one looks like to this new one. That said, this new one had some amazing fight choreography throughout. Um, a lot of, I don't want to say homages because it's all based off the same source material, right? In the manga, uh, it, it does kind of pay tribute to the OG anime in some ways. Um, I, I don't understand how people aren't enjoying or didn't enjoy that first episode. I will say, um, I saw more hate for people who watched the English dub of it. And I watched it in Japanese last week. And I'm kind of um, indifferent to this part of the conversation because I'm watching it in Japanese now. I'll check out an English dub. But when I was a kid, I only watched it in English. And the English cast, as we talked about with my uncle in the last part, it was a blast. Like They did a great job with that adaptation of the script. All the voice actors are really good and go on to have a million different roles in uh, you know different animes throughout the years. And I guess this new English cast, people just aren't vibing with some of the choices. Saw some people beefing with uh, Akane uh, Nabiki. I I'm kind of nervous to hear Nabiki's dub actor. I love Nabiki Tando. But I'm watching it in Japanese, and I'm not as familiar with the OG Japanese cast. Um, a lot of the stuff for Ranma that they have on YouTube, which sometimes I'll just pull it up and throw it on. Uh, it is that Japanese stuff, like kind of clipped, segmented out into like part episode 27, part four of eight, you know, shit like that. So I'll just roll through those sometimes, and a lot of times they're in Japanese. And that's like been my exposure to that cast over the last few years. But for English, uh, excuse me, for the new Japanese cast, I should say, I thought they did, did fine. <laughs> I enjoyed everybody. Uh, hopefully they continue to sound uh, as good when they bring in other characters, like a shampoo or a haposai or a cologne. Because those characters could ha very easily be given the most annoying of all the voices. But uh, we'll see how it goes. One thing we did talk about at least a little bit with the fact that we're listening to those songs in the last uh, segment. I was a little nervous about this series coming in because of the music. The OG Ranma score is, uh, I love that. Like there's, there's so many songs in there that live in my brain and I hear them in my brain every single day. And I grew up, you know, watching the show and I had all the CDs and listened to all like the opening songs and the OSTs. And I, I was worried. I'm like, how do you, 
how do you reboot a show with some scores that are so iconic like you uh the the ryoga thing uh the ryoga main theme uh the you don't love me back uh theme um just so long as you realize like there are so many different little pieces of music in that original anime that are near and dear to my heart so it's always been an important part of my attraction to the show the aesthetic of it overall and it was kind of like chinese ish sort of music but there was also this really weird like french element into it uh there's like a lot of like accordions like these big long romantic fucking lines it was such a good score i say all of that to say when i sat down to watch this episode none of that i didn't even think about it i had such a good time and was so engaged in what i was seeing on the screen i didn't think about it and the music they did have, it's not like I've gone back to analyze it or like see if it's good or if it's bad, but it played its role. It wasn't distracting to me and fit enough of the aesthetic that, I, I don't know, it just seemed like a kind of seamless deal. None of the music caught my ear where I was like, oh, listen to that score. You know what I mean? Like, and it probably will never happen like that until this show is like 25 years old and I have some nostalgia for it. Probably be dead by then. Who knows? My point is the music played its role. Huh, what else did I want to say about this show? The nipples thing, well played. I think that's a a good um, kind of compromise because, as stupid as it sounds, Ranma showing his boobs several times throughout the series, her boobs several times throughout the series, kind of is, I'm not going to say central to the plot, but it usually has some kind of role and it definitely has an overall arc of him being very uncomfortable as a girl and then becoming more comfortable and inhabiting that body and using it for, you know, to get his way sometimes, uh, you know, to, to dupe people or even when he does it in like a fight or something like that. I think Julius and I talked about that. Um, by the way, that thing, Julius uh, and I did that last Wednesday. So like shit, the first of October, maybe the second of October, somewhere in there. And it's been up on Patreon for a minute. So if you want to get stuff early, like pretty much right after it's recorded, Go join the Patreon, um, five bucks a month goes a long way. Um, but we talked about how it is very much in, uh, commentary on like femininity and what that looks like. And, you know, the traditional masculine male thing going on in Japan in the 1980s. I do like how they set up the show, like somewhere in the 19, uh, Dorima, Japan sometime in the 1980s. Like, cool. Just give us the general time frame where I'm supposed to be mentally. Very cool. Tendo Dojo Training Hall. Let's do it. Uh, there was a couple of other things I think I wanted to say. Um, yeah, I finished the thing about the nipples, right? Not showing the nipple, but still showing the breast. Tasteful, I guess. People are very upset about it, though. I get it. And you ain't seen real boobs in real life. Ronma boobs are the best boobs you've seen. I get the anger, man. I get it. Um... I did see Screen Rant put out a stupid article about <laughs> this that first episode about how um they could be breaking the canon of Ranma and how it could have far reaching effects on the overall story <laughs> and where the anime is going to go. And I was like, what the fuck? I didn't catch any of that. I've watched the first episode of Ranma 8 million times in my life. This OG one did a very good job or this reboot one did a very good job of retelling a lot, of the, pretty much the same exact story beats and doing it in a very cool way. Their, their commentary, their well thought out commentary. That was like a week after we, uh, we watched the episode. It was like, there's a fight between Ranma and Genma and their transformed states in the streets of Narima. In the original, it's a, it's a rainy day and it's an abandoned street. In this one, they fight in front of like a group of people. And it is like a handful of people who are like, is that a girl and a panda? Wow, that's weird. First of all, I'm pretty positive that that's like in the OG thing. You're like, there are people around who see them. But this writer then goes on to like exasperate the situation by saying they pretty much fought in front of half of the city. Now everyone's going to know who they are. And that's going to change how people interact with Ranma throughout. I was like, bro, you needed something to write about that bad. You can't just write about how you enjoyed it and what you did or didn't enjoy. You got to make up some weird conspiracy shit like that just to get me to click, read on it, and then fucking 
process how dumb you are? God damn, dude. Uh, um, I think that's pretty much it. I, I, the main driving force behind this series, and we'll see how long they do it. I hope it's not a one season thing. Let it go for a few years at least. But it's it's just meant to be a more faithful adaptation of the manga, less filler nonsense than the original series, because the original series has a lot of filler nonsense, man. Uh, take it from me, I watched, uh, I don't know, at least 50 to 60% of it before I gave up and was like, yeah, man, I've seen all these stories before, you know? Uh, it would be a fun thing to revisit, I guess, like in a binge watch kind of situation, but I'm just going to sit back and enjoy this new uh, Ranma series, not go rewatch the old one anytime soon, and uh, just kind of appreciate it for what it is and what they're doing and what they're paying tribute to overall. Uh, actually, I think 68 years old as of yesterday, Rubiko Takahashi, the queen mangaka. So happy birthday to her. Thank you for this, uh, you know, amazing thing that you wrote back in the day that we're still all enjoying, you know, 40 years later or whatever it is. And I think that's going to do it for Super Dope. I, I, you know, sorry I kept my thoughts brief on this one, but uh, it's only the one episode and it really is an episode that I watched 8 million times in the OG series. And I just appreciate that they're paying tribute to it and they're doing it a service, but also in this new modern kind of way. I'm wicked excited to watch when big fights happen. Like, Ranma and Genma smacking each other around in all sorts of different scenarios within the household or in the street or whatever. That's like real common, low-key fight shit. Like, nobody thinks about it. It's so common in that series. I want to see what happens when he fights Tatewaki Kuno next week, the Blue Thunder of Furinken High. Because even in the old one, which wasn't the greatest in terms of choreographing fight scenes. There's a lot of great fight scenes, don't get me wrong, but nothing in comparison to the fight scenes that we see in modern anime. I'm so excited to see how they do this fight with Kuno. It's going to be cool uh, when Ryoga shows up. I'm already thinking about Ryoga learning the Boxai Tenkets and the, the training on Mount Terror fucking arc. Like, oh, wait till that gets animated in this new series and watch that fight with Ranma. And Ryoga and the fucking mountains and them learning these new techniques and fucking boulders crushing Ryoga and stuff. Oh, man. Um, so that's gonna do it. I am about to watch uh, the first episode of Dragon Ball Daima. It's supposed to be premiering on Crunchyroll at 1 p.m. today. So I'm gonna punch this thing up real quick and put it out and then watch it. It meaning Daima. Go to the store, pick up a PlayStation, come back home. To download the game, and then I'll by the time it's done, I'll probably have to go to my gig. I'm uh, sang last weekend, sing it again tonight, and we'll. Last weekend went all right, but I had Brandon back me up. OG, yeah, Br the Brandon back me up, <clears throat> so that was good. Uh, but tonight I'm flying solo, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, thank you for listening to the show. If you enjoyed it, five stars. If you're new because of the Ronma content, consider subscribing. I do want to do. Do want to do? It's not doo doo, man. Well, I don't know why I stopped and pointed that out. I would like to do. I would like to do more of this Ranma series, uh, but also a couple other things. I mean, Daima is going to be a thing that we're going to be covering episode to episode. My Hero Academia is about to wrap up, and actually, me and Feds are going to go see that My Hero Academia movie tomorrow afternoon. Man, what a good month for anime, huh? Damn. All right, so I'll see you soon for uh, episode one, Die Ma Review, and uh, I appreciate you listening. Super dope. And I'll probably do a Ronma thing on the way out, like a... Oh, no. Yeah.